The woman with Jamar Clark, the night police shot and killed him, is telling her story in a WCCO exclusive. She says the investigator's description of her role that evening is wrong. She was not dating Clark, and there was not a domestic dispute. I didn't call him and say, come and shoot him, or he, none of that. They have no reason to come combative at all, because they didn't get a call like that, not from me. And that night, Brianne Hayes is worried for her safety, so she didn't want her face shown. She spoke today with WCCO's Reg Chapman. Jamar Clark was present with his girlfriend, Rayanne Hayes. Just because you're with somebody does not mean you're dating them. From the very beginning of Mike Freeman's press conference, Rayanne Hayes disputes the narrative. She says she was never in danger from Jamar Clark, the man she calls a friend, not a boyfriend. No dispute, no domestic, none of that. Hayes says the night Clark was shot, they were at a party on Plymouth Avenue. She says she tried to get in the middle of an argument and got hurt in the process. I twist my ankle, I fell and hit the side of the, the door thing and bust my lip. That's all. Um, it's not a, it's an emergency. I can't walk. I just, it was an altercation downstairs in the building, and I tried to break it up. And in the process of it, I think I, I my legs sprung, and I can't move. In her 911 call early on November 15th, Hayes told the dispatcher she was hurt an hour and a half earlier. Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman says people at the scene, as well as EMTs, told investigators Hayes pointed out Jamar Clark as her boyfriend and the man who hurt her. She was questioned as she was put into the ambulance. They gave me a shot of something for the pain, and I laid back. I remember Jamar coming up to the window. I remember that. And I remember ambulance guy saying, oh, he's trying to break in. I'm like, no, he's not. He's, he's just trying to help me. Hayes says the last thing she remembers is seeing Clark's face as the ambulance doors closed. She says she did not know Clark was shot and killed until two days later. You're taking the focus off of you guys letting these officers go and trying to put it on me. If this would have never happened, this would have never happened. Bull crap. Why now? Why come forward now? Um, because I'm tired of the rumors. She wants the community to know she too was grieving and had no idea a night of having a good time would turn to tragedy. I can't heal because he's not healing. He's, uh, he's not in peace right now. You know, so how can I ever be in peace and he's not at peace? Now, Hayes says she has a boyfriend and was dating him back in November when Clark was shot. She says Clark was just a friend she likes spending time with and says rumors of her relationship are just that, rumors. Hayes says she believes in her heart Clark should be here today. She says he did not deserve to die the way that he did, Amelia. And I know, Reg, according to transcripts, uh, Hayes told police that she had been drinking, smoking marijuana that night, and she also said that she didn't see any part of the police officer's interaction with Clark, right? Yeah, that's true. And she said she can't speak to the altercation with the officers. She's upset with what she says is a police story that begins by putting Jamar Clark in a bad light. She's really grieving tonight. Uh, you, you know, Reg, I had a chance to uh, speak with Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman today, but that was before your interview, so mm -hmm. I didn't have a chance to ask him specifically yeah. about Hayes' allegations. However, he did tell me that the whole thing is horrible, and it could have been avoided in a lot of ways. He says he focused on Minnesota law and Supreme Court precedent, which is, would a reasonable cop have done the same thing as Dustin Schwarzy and Mark Ringenberg did at the very moment of that shooting? He says that Clark should have listened to the police and removed his hands from his pockets, even if he thought the police were wrong. Freeman also said that we need to do a better job training police how to de-escalate a situation and how to strategically withdraw. I'm upset that he's dead in 61 seconds. That's too fast. And there's other uses of force that could be done, and there's other comments that could have been made, and if, ifs, ifs, ifs. I have to deal with what's there, and I am now comfortable with that decision, and I'm frankly relieved that it's out. Freeman told me nearly every prosecutor who looks at this case would reach the same decision that he did, and he believes a lot of citizens will reach that same decision as well. In fact, he is encouraging people to look at the evidence it is all online. You can review it for yourself at WCCO.com.